Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox recording here, critiquing subscriber mixes, episode 19. So before we begin, I just want to let you know if you're interested in submitting your mix and having me do a review of it on this channel within this series, there are detailed instructions below in this video's description. It tells you exactly how you can send me your mix and uh, maybe have it featured on this channel. So without any further ado, let's jump into this group of mixes submitted by my loyal email subscribers. And up first, we have a mix from Mr. Chad. Let's check it out. <laughs> Okay, well, Chad, I dig what I'm hearing. Uh, a couple things I'm noticing just upon the first few seconds of listening. Uh, two things, let me just say this. Uh, the first thing is I hear a lot of high-end click on your kick drum that's sort of out of the range of the fundamental frequency response of a kick drum. So I'm hearing a lot of information like above 8K uh, that you could just roll off. Uh, one problem with mixing digitally is that a lot of those high frequencies aren't softened because there's nothing there to soften it. Uh, in other words, we're not using any transformer bass or tube preamps or any type of analog signal chain or signal path. So a lot of our source sounds will tend to be very harsh and have a lot of that upper harmonic content that we don't need. And I hear a lot of that on your kick drum. So just roll off, I would say, all frequencies above like eight to 10K just to get rid of those super duper highs that you don't need on your kick because I'm hearing a whole lot of them. The other thing is that your mix is heavily, heavily limited. I could actually see it clipping within my DAW. And what's interesting is that I noticed the snare is very, very loud, but because your mix is so clipped, what's happening is your snare drum actually ends up sounding buried and not hard hitting enough. So in my opinion, your snare bolt sounds too loud and also too soft. So you're gonna wanna back off on the limiting and just make sure you get your mix loud within the mix itself instead of having to rely on all of your volume coming from a limiter slapped across your master bus. But other than that, I love what I'm hearing. The source sounds sound really cool and it sounds like it's a cool arrangement, but um, give those tips a shot and let me know how that works out for you. All right, up next we have a mix from Mr. Matt. Let's see what we got. Okay, well, Matt, really cool tune, uh, cool production as well. It sounds very kind of lush and spacious. Uh, a few things here. The first thing I want to mention is you might want to go back and just check the vocal performance. I hear some pitchy notes. Uh, you might not necessarily have to redo it, but definitely use like Melodyne or, or maybe even Autotune just to fix a few notes here and there that might be a little flat or sharp. Um, again, pitch correction is not cheating. Do whatever you need to do to make your production pro at the source. But aside from that, I'm noticing a very similar issue to what I heard in the last mix. And it's that your mix is very limited and it's making your snare drum disappear and sound very soft. And the other thing here is that your mix isn't necessarily clipping because it seems like you have your ceiling on your limiter set very low. Uh, your mix is peaking at around negative six, which is interesting because it's heavily limited, but it's not close to zero. So what I recommend doing is just opening up that ceiling on your mix and set it to maybe negative one or negative 0.1, just so you have no overs, nothing exceeds zero dB, but there's no reason to limit your mix so heavily if you're gonna have it peak at negative six. So um, by doing that, you're gonna have a lot more power in your snare drum and it's gonna add a lot more impact to your mix in general. So give that a shot and let me know how that works out for you. Excellent work. All right, our next mix here comes from Mr. Nazar or Nazar. I apologize if I'm butchering the pronunciation of your name.
right, well, Nazar, first off, I just gotta say that I love the riffs. Uh, the performances sound very, very tight. The production sounds awesome, really great source sounds. You mentioned in your email that the one issue you're having is that your mix sounds boxy. And dude, I'm gonna be honest with you, um, it's not gonna take much to clear it up. Again, the sources sound so good and the performances are so locked in and mix ready. The only thing that I recommend doing is just maybe on your drum bus, removing a little bit of lower mids, uh, maybe a little bit of lower mids on your bass guitar as well. Maybe a little on your rhythm guitars. You don't wanna go too crazy because you can end up uh, taking out the warmth out of your mix or sucking the warmth out of your mix and making your mix sound harsh. So a little bit goes a long way. So I don't recommend you just slapping an EQ on your two bus and just sucking out a bunch of lower mids and boosting a bunch of top end. I don't think your mix needs that. It's already so close as it is. Just these few little tweaks on again, maybe your drum bus, your snare if you wanna go crazy, uh, your bass, and maybe a little bit on your guitars, uh, varying amounts depending on the instrument that you're working on. But again, a little bit goes a long way and you're gonna have a much clearer mix by having to hardly change anything that you already have going on. So give this a shot and send me the new version. I'd be curious to hear it. And uh, I love uh, what you're doing. Great job with the production. All right, our next mix here comes from Nicholas. Okay, well, Nicholas, uh, I dig what I'm hearing. It sounds like a great arrangement and a lot of great songwriting happening here. Um, the one thing I'm gonna say is that, again, uh, a lot of limiting on your mix. And what it sounds like is there's a whole lot of gain reduction happening on your drums all in one place. So when you mix like this, what ends up happening is everything ends up sounding uh, squashed and everything is fighting uh, to occupy a specific space. So what I recommend doing is apply this limiting and clipping on only your drum bus not on your two bus or master bus or master fader. So that way there's room for everything to breathe because what it sounds like to me is everything is kind of crammed and squished at the top. So the guitars are stepping on the drums and when the toms kick in, they're stepping on the guitars and then there's no space for the vocal. If you take care of the headroom on your drums within the mix itself, that's gonna allow a lot of extra headroom on your master bus and you're gonna have to do less work on your master bus and everything will breathe much more easily within your mix. So kind of take that approach on your next project and uh, let me know how that works out for you. I think you're gonna find that it's gonna make mixing easier and you're gonna be able to achieve a much clearer, more open and spacious sounding mix much easier, especially when you have a lot going on in your mix like uh, what you had in this production. All right, our final mix here comes from Roy. Okay, well, Roy, I dig what I'm hearing. Now, you mentioned in your email that you're struggling with mix clarity, and I have a few ideas for you. Uh, one thing is, is that the mix, again, is very, very heavily clipped and compressed. You might wanna back that off a little, uh, but that's not really the main issue here. There really aren't many issues at all. The main takeaway that I've heard from this is that your kick drum is very, very low-endy. So you have two options with your kick drum. If you like the presence, of your kick drum as it is, I recommend just using a low shell filter and reducing all frequencies in the sub range, like all frequencies below 100 hertz by three to four dB. So your high frequency content in mid range of the kick is left untouched and the presence of the kick will remain intact, especially on smaller speakers. Um, but the low end mud that's mudding up your mix and creating extra, you know, distracting low end that's conflicting with your bass will be subdued and more balanced. The other option that you have is the much simpler option is just to turn your kick drum down, which will in effect accomplish the exact same thing that I mentioned before. The main difference is that if you turn your kick drum down, not only are you turning the low end of the kick down, but you're turning all of the frequencies of your kick down. So maybe you could try lowering your kick and if you don't like how it's disappearing, just undo that and use a low shell filter uh, to reduce the low end so your high frequencies and mid range of the kick remain as they are. Uh, and that's really about it. I love the sound of everything else. Everything 
else sounds really balanced. I, it's pretty clear sounding to me, uh, but I can imagine when you listen to this in like a system that has a sub, you're gonna have a lot of muddy low end that's gonna give the appearance of a muddy mix, even though the mix really isn't muddy uh, at the source. So Roy, give that a shot and let me know how that works out for you. So I would just like to shout out and thank everyone for submitting this excellent group of mixes. And again, if you're interested in submitting a mix, there are detailed instructions below in this video's description. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things Metal Rock production. If you're interested in some Frightbox swag, we've got t-shirts, mugs, and a ton of other cool stuff on the way. There's a link below to the Frightbox merch store in this video's description. Now there are so many things that home studio owners gloss over when producing and mixing music within their home studios. And I don't want this for you. I want you to produce better results professional results with the gear that you already have. And this is why you can download my Polish production checklist for absolutely free. The checklist highlights many of these common blind spots that most home studio owners, again, gloss over and points you in the right direction so you can achieve the results that you want to achieve, again, with the gear you already have. The PDF is completely free and there's a link below in this video's description. And until next time, happy mixing.